Hey guys, Andrew Houston here with another No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. Here's the question. What does the calendar, you know, a CEO, champion CEO of a multi-million dollar contractor look like? What's their calendar look like versus contractors, you know, $500,000 and below? This is really critical for you guys. If you want to get up there, you want to make the money, you want to make the profits, you, you want to become a multi-million dollar successful contractor you got to know what the calendar looks like or what the differences are that's what we're going to be getting in today if you ever wondered that that's what we're going to nip in the butt and that's it so i will see you guys on the flip side ciao until right now this very moment contractors have always been on their own not as tradespeople, but being alone and knowing how to take their business to the next level they call us working class they call us blue collar they say that we don't have the smarts to become the business owner that we're meant to be That is such bullshit. You have the ability. You're more than any of that. The question really is where do you get the insights that you need specific to contracting to systemize your business so you can get your profits to pay for your freedom? I'm Andrew Houston. I'm gonna show you how to make more profits, how to get more control, how to get more freedom in the simplest, quickest way possible without any of that bullshit. Welcome to the No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. Listen up, level up, and if you learn something, like the video, subscribe to the channel, change your business, change your life. Hey, Rockstars, Andrew Houston here with another No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. So the topic today is what does the calendar look like of a multi-million dollar successful champion CEO contractor versus a contractor that's say $500,000 and below? Look, it looks different. You know, the way that they, they, they use their time is different. So if we want to grow our contracting business and you are, a, you know, $500,000 contractor and below, pay close attention to how you know, a champion CEO, you know, that has a multi-million dollar contracting company, uh, what what their calendar looks like versus your calendar. Now, the reason that you you want to be aware of this is if you keep doing things at, you know, a lower level compared to where you want to be, you're going to stay at that lower level. Okay. And, and, and that's, that's something that unless we do something about or know what to do uh, to make the change, we're going to end up stuck there. Now, for those contractors that are already doing a million dollars and above, say multi-million dollar contractor, if you're listening in, you know, you might be able to, throughout this, you know, podcast, tweak and adjust what your calendar looks like and reflect on almost like giving yourself a bit of an audit um, as to, you know, what you can do to improve your, your, you know, your calendar and, and how to leverage it to get the most out of it. So let's get right into this. I'm going to actually be sharing with you a document, uh, which is the contractor's default calendar. You guys can get your hands on that. I'm actually going to walk through some of the steps so that, you know, after you listen to this podcast, you'll you'll actually be able to use some of these principles to actually create your own calendar, um, you know, in a very structured way. But as far as it goes in comparing a, you know, a contractor that's $500,000 and below and a million or multi-million dollar contractor, Let's go through some of the key differences. So one of the key differences is that, and we're going to heavily focus in on the contractor that's a multi-million dollar contractor. One of the biggest differences is that they rinse and repeat based upon understanding this core principle that their cash flow and their profits, and also on on the personal front, in other words, the value that they get out of their calendar and out of their weeks and out of their months is directly related to what they put into their calendar. So they use data okay, to prove that out. And, and what they do is instead of having, one of the biggest differences is that they their meetings are focused heavily around reviewing data and making decisions based around data. They aren't spending their time creating the data. They are not spending their time you know, managing the data. They've got defaulted slots in their calendar, i.e. reviewing their financials every week, whereby they're, you know, getting other people to provide that data and the time that they're spending on those tasks, like financial review, maybe reviewing profitability of different jobs, maybe looking at the data is from a, you know, what's this, how are we doing this for sales targets? 
the data around looking at budgets, by the way, those are all things that champion CEOs at that level have in their calendar um, in their week or as a bare minimum um, throughout the month. So they might be looking at their budgets, maybe not on a daily basis or even weekly basis. It could be on a bi-weekly basis or a monthly basis, but within the span of a month, they have defaulted in their calendar that they're going to be reviewing data, like I said, could be specific to marketing, specific to sales, specific to looking at their profit and loss statement, their balance sheets. They're looking at that data and they're making decisions in those meetings to determine whether they're on track, off track, or they're on schedule. So number one, what do they do? They rinse and repeat, putting data-driven meetings, defaulting them in their calendar. And they look at those meetings as being non-movable. I mean, it's non-negotiable. And one of the reasons that that's really important brings me to number two. They leverage other people by letting their, i.e. their team, know when those meetings are so that they're actually communicating to their team, leveraging the team, doing the heavy lifting, that they need to, you know, make sure that they have whatever steps are needed so that come that meeting for the CEO, the data is already there. So this, again, number two, they're leveraging their team's calendars because the team knows the high level CEO meetings that they need to provide information for. So really that second principle is like a waterfall effect. Champion CEOs of multi-million dollar contracting companies, their calendar feeds the calendar of their team. I'll say that again. Their calendar feeds the calendar of their team, which in turn, turn the, the, the calendar of their team feeds the, 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 those meetings with the CEO um, with the right data and the right information so that come those meetings, the CEO has what he needs, the team has provided it, and everybody is in sync. So that's principle number two. Number three is, you know, they they are focused in on leadership driven, you know, discussions. They're not their calendars. In other words, are way less tactical and more leadership driven. So they're giving direction. They're communicating um, what are the results, what are the goals. You know, I, I look at it almost like this equation of. A champion CEO, and you guys might want to write this down, the equation for them getting results and having success, one of the equations is their vision. Here's where the company's going. You know, multiplied by the goals that they have for the company, which in turn, you know, those goals then get distributed. And they might only be two or three high-level goals. They, those goals get distributed to the different departments. And the different departments come up with the plans and the actions to get those results and the 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 you know the calendar of the champion ceo they are they are tracking to that plan but the heavy lifting i can't stress enough is being done by the team so their calendar it, their calendars are fed starting off with you know focusing in on activities that are high level from a leadership directional perspective specific to the vision and the goals that they've set out for the company. And that in turn gets distributed just like that waterfall effect in the previous principle down to management and, and even all the way down to the guy in shipping and receiving, guy picking up parts, the guy managing the inventory. So it's a top level down um, driven, uh, driven calendars um, around the vision, the goals, you know, you know what the plan is per department, what the actions are. So they're not getting into the weeds. They're staying at at the right level, giving leadership direction. Hey guys, you're going off track. Go left. Go right. Okay. Versus actually getting in there and 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 driving the vehicle themselves. Okay. Or actually doing the tactical things themselves. So that's number three. Number four is they very much leverage the principle of their calendar so they have i wouldn't say necessarily a balanced approach because a lot of champion ceos um in all honesty you know in a lot of cases workaholics we put in a lot of time we're very passionate very driven 
But the principles around getting the most out of their week, out of their month, out of their quarter, out of their year is, is very focused in around meetings in their calendar that have specific allocation of, of the value of their time. In other words, they're focused in on, as an example, instead of trying to make sure that you know, the inventory is, you know, that, that, you know, hey, we got too many 1110 boxes or we have too much pipe or we have too much wire. They're not getting down to that level. They're they're looking at things at, at a much higher level. Again, giving more leadership. You know, this is back to the previous one, but they're very, very focused in on knowing what the value of their time is. So as an example, they're actually having meetings with the suppliers on a monthly or quarterly basis to get better pricing for their whole company versus phoning up a supplier saying, I need a, you know, a, a quarter off of that you know, box, you know, or, you know, I need the pipes, you know, I, I need to get a better price per foot on, on this piping. No, they're, they're working at similar levels. So this is number four is they focus in on high value tasks um, and, and and more leadership driven activities whereby their time is worth tens of thousands of dollars per hour. Example, like I was talking about regarding the suppliers, when they go and get 10% price reduction and they're dealing with, you know, a million and a half, two million dollars worth of of material for their company, they're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in the span of an hour or two, you know, meeting with suppliers. Like that's where they, they they really focus in on the value of their time. And they apply these same principles as far as what they get out of their week and out of their time to their personal life as well, not just the business. So they're actually, you know, they're, they're putting in slots of time for their family. They're putting in slots of time, you know, with their, with their team. So there's a balance and, and they apply that and they stick to it. Okay. The last thing is they engage with people at similar levels. They're engaging, back to the supplier example, they're engaging with people at an executive level regarding their suppliers and, you know, at an executive level regarding their, you know, their marketing at an executive level, you know, regarding their team at an executive level right across the board, because that's the leaders talk to leaders. Now they're not thinking that they're better than anybody else. But they focus their time and energy with like-minded people at their level. And in a lot of cases, actually in all cases for champion CEOs, they're surrounding themselves with people that are actually above them a bit so they can consistently learn from them and move themselves up what we call the contractor's ladder of success. So those are the five things. Now, I said I'd give you a quick little insight on this, um, on this tool. Let me just share my screen if you guys are able to watch this video. This is a good starting point for, for anybody listening in because it follows the core principles of creating a, a default calendar, uh, to, again, to default your success. So, you know, one of the things I'll go through really quickly that you want to do a couple of these steps is you want to create a calendar, okay, um, that, that works for you, you know, in the sense of use technology, okay? Number two, you want to be able to um, look at start times and end times of your week. Like if you don't put some sort of, you know, rules of the game around this is when I'm working, this is when I'm not working, then you're never going to be able to get to number three, which is filling your calendar with immovable tasks. It means tasks that can't be moved around your team, around your clients, around, around your family, around your free time. So that your calendar is not just about work and business. It's about being a champion CEO and being in control of your life. Number four is you know, know the difference between movable and unmovable tasks. Okay. It's okay to have tasks or to have time allocated to things that, you know, that can be moved and know the difference between the ones that are immovable. Okay. Um, that way it gives you power over what to say yes to and what to say no to. And then the last couple of little tips here, okay, is color code your calendar. Champion CEOs, you know, in multi-million dollar contracting businesses, they leverage visual aid so that whether it's on their phone or, you know, on their computer, they're they're leveraging things like color coding so that they know certain colors mean certain things. Certain colors could mean you know it's a higher value activity. You know, other colors could mean that it, it, these are you know movable um, activities that they that you know 
that if something comes up that's more important, they can move. And they know the difference between the other ones that are not movable. So those are some really good insights for you guys. Pick one of them. Get your hands in on the contractor's default calendar. You know, if you want to get access to that, if you're part of the you know Profitable Contractors Association, just type in, you know, contractor's default calendar, just default uh, calendar, and we'll get that tool out to you. It gives you all the steps to get you started on this. Look, you can all become champion CEOs and all run multi-million dollar contracting businesses. And even if you don't want to, strive towards putting your time on things and getting control of your time in a way that makes you a champion CEO of your life. You know, not just on the business front, but on the personal front. I'm Andrew Houston from Prof for Contractors. You know, make sure that you you keep in mind that your profits and your cash flow and the value out of your, you know, out of your week on the business front, um, and the value of your week on the personal front is dr- a direct correlation to what you put in your calendar and how you protect it. So I will see you guys on the flip side, and uh, and that's it. So, you know, leverage your time, leverage your team, make sure that you're empowering yourself to know what to say yes to and what. To to. And this can happen like right after this podcast. And don't get overwhelmed trying to apply all these five principles of, of how a champion CEO manages their calendar. Just pick one of them, the one that resonates the most with you, the one that you've got the most you know confidence in that you can apply so you can get some quick wins. And I'll see you on the flip side. Hey, rock stars. Thank you for watching the No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button. And if you're serious about growing and need help, click on the link below. Myself and my team would love to help and give you the necessary tools so you can take your contracting business to the next level. And remember, dominate, delegate, and deliver.